good morning or potentially good afternoon. Um, but um, hello, STEM Corps. I'm excited for you all to be here today. Thank you again for um, joining us for another Friday for our virtual, um, well, actually, yeah, for our virtual employer talk. Um, for those of you who do not know me, um, my name is Cheryl Martinez. I am the STEM program manager with Growth Sector. Um, You've probably heard a little bit or a lot about growth sector in your interaction, um, whether you participated in our summer bridge program on campus or you're connected with your program um, now on campus. So whether your program is called um, STEM core, um, OMG, if you're called um, bridge to engineering, um, you're still in the right place. Um, we call the program STEM core on our national level. Um, and we're just super excited because um, obviously the STEM Corps program, we're um, on campuses all over the country, so you're in good company and we're um, excited that you're able to connect with your colleagues and peers um, and other STEM Corps participants around the country. Um, and a big part, obviously, of our program is being able to expose you um, and keep you connected to our employer partners, um, not only for mentorship, but um, I know the goal for a lot of you all is employment and internship opportunities. Um, and this poses a great opportunity, especially because um, we have, the STEM Corps program has worked really closely with Caltrans over um, the last few years in terms of being able to um, place students for amazing internship opportunities, um, really led by um, our guest today, um, Anthony, who's gonna be able to talk to you a little bit about who Caltrans is and just um, what the partnership looks like. Um, so we will be sure to leave a few minutes at the end um, if anybody has questions, but also feel free to put your questions in the chat as well um, if anything comes up for you during today's session. All right, so um, I will turn it over to our guest today, um, Anthony, to take things over. Welcome. <clears throat> awesome. Thanks, Cheryl. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here, you know, especially to uh, present to all of you. And I'm even more excited to, uh, to hear that there's uh, uh, some of you students from all the United States. So hopefully we could uh, entice you to come to California and uh, join us uh, over here in Caltrans. So, uh, so with that, let me share my screen real quick. And get this started. Oh, uh, let me see. <clears throat> screen sharing. Actually, off. <clears throat> let me share the other screen. Screen two. <clears throat> <All right. clears throat> yeah. So, uh, so <clears throat> once again, my name is Anthony Ng. I'm from Caltrans over here in California. I'm a civil engineer. Uh, and uh, the division I actually work in is in design. So uh, so uh, I'm pretty excited to once again uh, be here to present to all of you and give you some background on, on Caltrans. <clears throat> so <clears throat> so Caltrans, we're, uh, it's, a, a, it's for a lot of different states, it's what, what uh, some people call California Department of Transportation. So uh, most states, you know, they go by DOTs, Department of Transportation. But in California, you know, we're, uh, we're, uh, we feel that we're a little bit special. So we actually give ourselves a specific name. So we call ourselves Caltrans. So, uh, we're, so it's a statewide organization. We have uh, just over 21,000 employees. Uh, we do have a lot of support uh, 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 divisions uh, within Caltrans, but about almost 40% of us here in Caltrans are engineers. So hopefully for some of you students who are engineering uh, majors or uh, hopeful engineering majors, you know, uh, definitely, hopefully you could uh, look into Caltrans as being a place you would like to uh, uh, work with. <clears throat> so for what we do, uh, you know, we're in charge of about 250 different uh, state highways within the whole state, which uh, equates to 15, just over 15,000 centerline miles and uh, just over 52,000 lane miles that we operate and maintain throughout the state. <clears throat> so since California is a relative, relatively big state, we do, uh, we have broken up uh, the state into different districts. So uh, we have uh, you know, our first district all the way up in Eureka and all the way down to our 12th district, which is all the way down in Orange County in uh, so Southern California. Uh, and our headquarters uh, is all the way up in our, our state capital, uh, Sacramento. As, <clears throat> so, you know, so every, all the different districts, they all report to our headquarters up in Sacramento. So for some of you students who are uh, in Southern California, if you guys do, uh, you know, do interact with Caltrans, you guys will most likely interact with the southernmost four districts. Uh, as we just mentioned, there's District 12, which is in Orange County, which is our smallest district in the state. Uh, then we have District 11, which is San Diego Imperial County. 
Uh, then we have the largest district in, in the state, which is District 8, which covers San Bernardino and Riverside County. And the best district of all the di 12 districts in Caltrans is uh, District 7, Los Angeles. It's only the best because I, I work there. <laughs> so, so yeah. So hopefully uh, you guys do get a chance to come and visit. Uh, definitely let me know if you guys are interested. I definitely could meet up with you guys. So with that, I just want to show a quick uh, <clears throat> video. A uh, promotional video that we we do show uh, to people to uh, you know give you guys a little bit of insight and different opportunities we do have here in Caltrans. So with that, let me open up the video over here, and then <clears throat> oh, actually, let me stop and reshare this so I can share with the uh, the video or with the sound. Share, share sound. Um, I don't think we, I don't hear the sound, Anthony. I'm not sure if everybody else. Oh. What was that? I'm not hearing any sound. You're not hearing any sound. Okay, let me reshare that again. Show share sound. Oh, optimize for video clip. Okay, there you go. All right, how about now? With over 20,000 employees, Caltrans, the California Department of Transportation, is a world-class engineering organization that manages the people and regions of California. When I graduated college, I wasn't too sure about what I wanted to do with my degree, and then I got hired on with Caltrans, and it's been the best decision I've ever made. So many opportunities in planning right away, maintenance, programming, so many different aspects that come into play in, in what Caltrans is. We have some of the most talented field crews anywhere working out there in some challenging and sometimes beautiful field conditions using the latest technologies, doing their jobs, and bringing that data into the office where we have some of the most talented uh, staff you'll find anywhere. We play a significant role in making our economy the fifth largest in the world, bringing goods and services to California's customers and ensuring their travel safety. Caltrans works with local agencies to manage more than 50,000 miles of California's highway and freeway lanes, funds three of Amtrak's busiest inner city rail services, and permits more than 400 public use airports and special use hospital heliports. Today, this is my office. One of the things I like most about working for Caltrans is the ability to get out of the office and actually look at the projects we're working on firsthand in the field. Our goal is to be a performance-driven, transparent, and accountable organization that values its people, resources, and partners, and meets new challenges through leadership, innovation, and teamwork. Caltrans is a great place to work. Here in design, we prepare plans, specs, and estimates, and we coordinate with maintenance and construction to make sure that our projects are constructible and maintainable. What I love about Caltrans is that there's so much to learn, and I'm surrounded by great mentors who are always willing to help me out along the way. There is a certain satisfaction that comes from knowing that I've designed a piece of that infrastructure, and that what I have done is something that will benefit the lives of millions of people. I started with Caltrans as a student assistant and I was instantly drawn to the challenging and engaging projects that I had the opportunity to work on. When a position opened up, I didn't even think twice of applying. Caltrans provides you with the tools and resources to set you up for career success and um, working for Caltrans feels like a family. We are dedicated to our vision of a safer, more sustainable, and accessible transportation system for all users. The quality of management and the ability to facilitate and cultivate a positive work atmosphere. Uh, everyone um, I've worked with at Caltrans, uh, they know the tangible benefits that they are conferring on the community, and they're proud of it. And they take great pride in uh, not just what they're working on, 
um, but the results they see day in and day out. So I've been with Caltrans for 26 years, and what I have appreciated the most about working for Caltrans, the opportunities that we have here that you may not have at other state agencies or in the private sector. If you want to work in roadway design or in bridge design, drainage or geotechnical design or environmental engineering, there are so many different opportunities, and you are encouraged to move around. One of the things I love about working for Caltrans is how diverse we are. So there's a a lot of collaboration, love the environment, love the family nature of working in Caltrans. As a professional land surveyor, I do have the opportunity to work in the field or in the office. If you love the mountains, if you love the coast, if you love the valley, Caltrans has those opportunities. I appreciate the ability to explore your career. So if you're not sure what you want to do, there are so many places that you could land and you can find the best version of yourself here. I would say, do yourself a favor, Come work for us. We would love to have you. You would make us better. Yeah, definitely you could send an email here or you could definitely send me an email. <laughs> Personally, send me an email. To the ball. Turn. Okay. So, all right. So, here, let me bring this back up. Here and oh, let me see. Actually, I'll swap. Give me one second. <clears throat> let me see. This place heading swap. All right. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so so yeah, so hopefully that's uh, give you a little bit of background and uh, on Caltrans, a little bit more background on Caltrans, and, and you know some insights on on uh, you know the opportunities that we have here in Caltrans. So and and just to let you know that you know Caltrans is such a big organization, we do so many different things. So even though we're broken up into twelve different districts, and within each district, we actually are even broken up into even more different divisions. So. Some of the divisions that we have here is uh, design, which is the best one, because partly because I'm in that one. Uh, construction, uh, traffic operations, uh, project management, planning, right of way, and maintenance. And within each of these divisions, we actually even broke on, uh, uh, we break them up into, into even more uh, uh, different units because there's so many different things that we actually do handle within each division. So on the division of design, we have uh, you know uh, units such as surveys, we ha which actually goes out and you know gets the information for us to put into our base maps so we could design off of uh, GIS, which is geographic information systems, where they take that data and make it into a more usable format, uh, like where they actually put them on maps, and then we're, and we can actually put them together and see what ac things actually look like from the surveys. Uh, hydraulics design, which where they calculate all the different runoff that actually flows into our roadways. And, and so we could size up our, our uh, cash basins and detention basins. Uh, pavement design, which is fairly straightforward, right? Uh, you know, they help us uh, design our pavement where we, when we design our pavement, we try and design it to where they have at least a 20 year life. Cause definitely we don't want to have to, you know, give everybody the hassle of having to redo everything every, uh, every year or every couple of years. Then of course we have roadway design which are where our uh, civil engineers actually go out and they actually design the different alternatives that kind of like the one you see here on the right. Then in between, we have landscape architecture. So you don't have to be just an engineer to be in Caltrans. You could be a landscape architect and you can help design, you know, all the, uh, the, uh, the vegetation that, that we put around in our freeways. Cause you know, definitely we don't want everything to be like a concrete jungle. So, <laughs> you know, so, uh, in between the concrete, we do have uh, landscape architecture uh, uh, to make things look a little bit uh, more appealing. Uh, then also we have utility engineering, where uh, <clears throat> this one, it's, it's kind of one of those things where, yeah, if, uh, if you don't really get into it, you wouldn't even know that there was such, such thing as utility engineering. But uh, especially in Caltrans, you know, these are the engineers that actually look into, you know, to seeing and verifying all the utilities that are in the ground that we usually can't see on a day-to-day -day basis and make sure that when we do do our designs and our and when we, when we actually go out to construction <clears throat> that we don't hit any of these utilities <clears throat> then 
then we have the division of construction. So within Caltrans, if you do go into construction, you're not gonna be going out there and uh, you know, uh, you know, hammering nails and you know, uh, putting things together. Although you know, nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's that's a whole uh, a different uh, thing in itself, which is uh, you know, it's it, it's it's really in integral in what we do. But within Caltrans, you know, you're mainly going to be in the management uh, <clears throat> type of role, to where you're going to make sure that you know, with contractors who are actually building everything, that they're actually building it correctly and they're building it per plan. <clears throat> then we have the uh, units such as CPM, which stands for crit critical path method, where, you know, these are the people or the engineers that look at the different schedules and, and they break everything down to, to look and see how, how we, sh uh, what's the best way to, uh, to actually build our project. Because you can't build everything all at the same time, because especially if things are on top of each other. So they, they developed a critical path of where they say, you know, this one task has to come before that one, or certain tasks can be overlapping with each other without conflicting. Then we have the inspection unit uh, or units where they actually go out there and inspect to make sure that everything's built per, per plan. Then we have the traffic operations division where they look at all the different things in traffic operations. So first we have ITS, which stands for Intelligent Transportation Systems. And they're like our eyes out there where if, uh, if for those of you guys who are in, in California, you'll see uh, that in on the, our freeways, we actually have cameras out there and no, those aren't to catch you guys from uh, in speeding uh, or <laughs> catch you guys to see if you guys are speeding or anything. But it's, it's our eyes out there where they actually check to make sure that everything's running smoothly. And if there's any incidents out there, then that we can actually send our uh, California Highway Patrol or C CHP out there to help take care of any incidents that may out, be out there to that causes uh, any traffic. <clears throat> we have transportation safety where they make sure that you know whatever we design or what we have out there is safe. If not, they, they do analysis to make sure that, you know, we're up to the latest uh, safety standards. And then if, the, if not, then we uh, start up projects to start those, uh, the, the, those projects to improve those safety. Then we have system performance where they actually look <clears throat> and, and to see how everything is operating. So if you see something like in this picture, you see there's a little bit of gridlock, not quite bad yet, but, you know, uh, still a little bit. So they, they sit there and monitor it and see how everything's performing. And if it's not, then, then they'll start up a project to, uh, to see how we could actually fix that. Then we also have DTM, which stands for District Tra Traffic Manager. So these are the guys who actually take a look and, and uh, to see where our projects are gonna go out into construction. And they'll look and see what, what are the best times to, uh, to uh, perform a closure. Because for us to do a work, we do have to close a lane or two, or maybe even a whole section of freeway. So these people actually go out, you know, they, they take a look and see, you know, what are the best times to close uh, either those lanes or the section of the freeways that would be least impact to the public. <clears throat> then we have the division of project management. So project management, you know, there's just the regular project management where they actually oversee all the projects, make sure that uh, all the different tasks that goes into a project are, are done on time within scope and schedule. <clears throat> and then we have program management which are the engineers that look at, you know, how we can fund our projects. Cause you know, uh, it's not just, uh, we don't just get uh, funding from just one source. Uh, so, you know, we try and see how we can, you know, get the best bang for a buck and see where, where we can get different funds like either from the feds, from, uh, from counties, from cities, and even from ourselves uh, within the state to see how, and we, they make sure that we, you know, we get, do get all the funding at the right times of when we need it for our projects. <clears throat> then we have risk management where every project has risk. So this group actually takes a look at uh, and, and analyzes to see what potential risks we have in a certain project. And of those risks, what can we do to uh, mitigate? Uh, first to minimize those risks, but if we can't minimize it, or we minimize as much as we can, but then also see what we can do to mitigate it. Like, so if that, those risks do happen, what will we do? So that way we plan everything out before everything uh, goes out to construction and then before anything happens. And when things do happen, we do have a plan for that. Then uh, we also have our planning division. So within planning, we have uh, what we call project studies where they actually go and they study all different types of alternatives for any different uh, routes that we have and look for the, uh, the best alternative that we can, uh, we can 
put out there for any particular project. So they do all their studying. This is where all the innovation comes in. So they look at all the different alternatives, possible alternatives that we can uh, can, can consider for any particular project. Then we have the multimodal unit where they look and see how uh, us as Caltrans, which is mainly, you know, mainly we're in charge of what we uh, talked about earlier, just our uh, freeways and state highways. But we want to make sure that our state highways work together with all the multimodal uh, uh, facilities out there, which includes bike, which includes includes transit, uh, whether it be uh, either rail or bus, and make sure that we have that connectivity between our, our facilities and the multimodal uh, uh, transit uh, facilities. Then we have regional planning, which I personally think these guys are probably the most uh, important people out there, where they actually look at the whole region and see the trends of how development and traffic is happening out there in the region. And so then they can actually look into the future, at, you know, and because what they do is actually they'll, they'll look at the traffic trends and to project it out 20 and or 40 years and see where we actually need to, you know, uh, propose projects, like whether it be add lanes, fix an interchange, or, uh, you know, <clears throat> and, 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 and they'll try, and to, try to see, you know, what we need either whether it's 10 years from now or 20 years from now. So we actually start working on those projects. So so actually by the time things, uh, you know, things get bad, uh, you know, we'll already have something out there that actually uh, fixes it. So hopefully we try to make this as seamless as possible. So <clears throat> with that, I just want to go over uh, some projects that uh, we've worked on uh, over the last few years, because as you saw in that video earlier, you know, we, uh, you know what we do is very public. And uh, which is, I think it's pretty awesome because, you know, uh, whatever we do, you know, I, it makes, at least for me, everything that I've designed and put out there, uh, I feel, like, you know, it's a little bit of sense of pride because every time I pass by it, I'll be like, yeah, you know, I, this is something I worked on. This is something that I've uh, helped out that you're, that I helped design and got constructed that would help out the public. <clears throat> So one of the uh, 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 big name projects that we've been working on, and, and actually it's out in construction right now, is a US 101 wildlife crossing project to where <clears throat> the, the scope of work of this project is to build a overcrossing over US 101, which is a freeway. And it's gonna be like 165 feet wide and 200 feet long. And <clears throat> what it is, is it's, uh, it's a wildlife crossing. So it's not your usual bridge for cars, and actually on this bridge is no cars are actually allowed. And it's really to help the wildlife cross in, in within this area. And the sponsor of this was actually started by the Mountain Recreation Conservation Authority, uh, where they actually uh, came to us in Caltrans and say, hey, you know what? Uh, we have a serious issue with the wildlife in this area, and we definitely need you guys to help out with, uh, you know, uh, to, in finding a solution. And the total cost of this project is about uh, 88 million. That was the initial cost, and you'll see in the video that come where we're gonna uh, that's gonna come up in a couple minutes. Uh, it's the cost has uh, gone up a little bit, but not anything too crazy. So to give you a feel for where this project is at, it's gonna be right here uh, on uh, off the US 101, and and you, the reason why uh, you know the wildlife organization came to Caltrans to help see how we could find a solution for this project is that years ago when we did build uh, the US 101 freeway over here, as you can see in this red line, is that uh, that this uh, dark orange or maroon uh, shaded area is a wildlife habitat. So when we build in uh, put in this freeway, we actually split this hab habitat in half, and so there's a northern portion and the southern portion. And we all know that with freeways, it's uh, it's, it's uh, not the best place for for wildlife to actually cross the freeway. So uh, technically, we just like we totally separated these two these two areas. So and one of the biggest things with this area, uh, the splitting of this area is there's a, a big mountain lion habitat out there, and you know so they're not able to uh, you know to cross to the other side where some of the relatives were uh, your cousins. <laughs> And uh, sisters and brothers were were living uh, when we split up the uh, uh, you know the areas with our freeway. So and and also it limited their their uh, their area of where they could hunt as well. So definitely it, it became a big issue for for the uh, wildlife that's out there. <clears throat> so 
this is a rendering of what it's going to look like. Like I said, it's a wildlife crossing, so uh, so no cars are actually allowed on this. And so we're going to put a wildlife bridge over the US 11 freeway. And also there's a frontage road, which is a Gora Road that's right next to it, which we're also put a, uh, we're also going to put a wildlife bridge over as well. So this is a rendering of what it would look like when it's uh, actually going to be built. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's this project is actually out in construction right now. So so for some of you guys who are here in Southern California, definitely if you drive through the uh, the 11 uh, freeway and through the uh, Agora Hills area, uh, you'll definitely see our construction people out there right now. So with that, I want to just share with you guys the another video the of a news reel that the uh, or the news report that uh, reported on this uh, this project as well. well. Southern California is famous for its freeways, and now we're one step closer to building a major thoroughfare just for wildlife. An $87 million wildlife bridge over the 101 freeway in Agora Hills entered its final design stage. Carter Evans shows us how it will help animals cross over safely. Yeah, this news report was right during when we were designed. Mountain lions and other wild animals have lived in the heart of Los Angeles for centuries, but the freeways that were built to connect people ended up isolating wildlife. Hoping to preserve mountain lions and other species, officials are in the final design stage for a crossing over one of LA's busiest freeways, the 101. Beth Pratt is with the National Wildlife Federation. This is not going to look like a standard overpass. No, these are beautiful. They're not just bridges. These are uh, vegetated landscapes because the animals have to feel safe. The overpass would stretch 200 feet over 10 lanes of highway and provide big cats, coyotes, and other creatures better access to not just food, but also potential mates. If we don't provide connectivity, they can't get dates outside their family, so they are at risk of going extinct. <laughs> so they understand what dating life is like in L.A.? Yeah, you know, uh, like all of us, the four or five divide uh, has killed many a romance. <laughs> Since the National Park Service started tracking mountain lions in 2002, 18 have died trying to cross freeways and other secondary roads. Without the overpass, animals have been forced to take risks or get creative. Which mountain lion was it that made it through here? So it was P-64. This image captured P-64 coming out of a drainage pipe last year. We found this long, dark tunnel that unfortunately isn't great in terms of a wildlife crossing in general. So far, the National Wildlife Federation has raised more than $13 million from private donors, and they're confident they'll raise the remaining 50 to 60 million. Completion is set for 2023. We're gonna inspire We're a little bit the behind right now. That many people are gonna drive under this and know what's possible in LA. If LA can do it, nobody else has an excuse. Carter Evans, KCAL 9 News. Okay. I'm Miguel. Oh. <clears throat> All right, yeah, so uh, yeah, I said we we're supposed to be done in 2023, and this news report was from a, a, a couple years ago. Uh, so right now, I think we're scheduled to complete uh, in, uh, let me see, <clears throat> complete in, I think, 2025 right now. So yeah, so a little bit delayed, but still moving forward. And one, one awesome thing, too, is, you know, how uh, in the uh, newsreel, you saw that, uh, you know, the, uh, the Wildlife Federation, they look for donors. One of the uh, big donors uh, for this project was Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, uh, and he donated like I think a million dollars to uh, for this project. So something very exciting, and definitely we can't uh, wait till it's uh, until it's complete. All right. So uh, and I just want to showcase one other project that we've worked on. It's called the Gerald Desmond Bridge. So with this bridge, it starts from the 47 over here, or close to 47 on Ocean Boulevard. And goes all the way to 210 uh, out in Long Beach, which is in uh, you know Southern California, within uh, District Seven. And and the purpose of this project is because is that there's an existing bridge out there right now, and the vertical clearance is uh, is not uh, adequate enough anymore because with the uh, new uh, ship containers nowadays, you know we have we have bigger ships and they're loading up with even more containers and much higher. So right now, uh, those uh, higher uh, container ships aren't able to, uh, to come in uh, to, into the port of uh, Long Beach. So, so once again, uh, but then, uh, and another part of the project, uh, purpose of the project is that the existing structure that you just saw is, is kind of old. 
So, and it's a uh, past its actual uh, design life. So uh, we do, uh, you know, want to make sure we replace it before it starts, uh, you know, falling apart. Then also, uh, you know, because of all the uh, imports that we're getting nowadays, especially, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm buying a lot of stuff from Amazon. A lot of this, uh, those things are coming from over, overseas. So the Port of Long Beach and Port of LA are actually getting extremely busy, even more busy than they've been for the last like uh, many years. So definitely we need to in, uh, increase the width of that bridge from four lanes to six lanes. And once again, we already uh, talked about how the vertical clearance is uh, not adequate. So this is a fairly expensive project. It's a little over a billion dollars for, for this bridge, but it's something that's uh, extremely uh, uh, necessary uh, to build. So this is what it looks like. And uh, this is a, actually, I, I kind of like this picture because it shows you uh, some of the things that we, we think about when we're designing and also constructing, uh, you know, in Caltrans or especially as civil engineers is because if you see here uh, that this is what the that old bridge, uh, where, where the old bridge is, and you see it's still there while they're building the new bridge. Because if we tear down the old bridge and put the new bridge in the same place, you know, because uh, construction on this was uh, three, four years. So definitely with all those uh, truck uh, trucks that go through here, if we tear down the old one, there's no way for them to use it for three or four years and definitely would not work. So one one method that we use a lot in uh, civil engineering, especially in Caltrans, is we design the bridge next to the old bridge. And then once the new bridge is done, uh, then we tear down the old bridge. And uh, while we, uh, you know, we open the new bridge, and once everybody's using new bridge, then we could tear down the old bridge. And that way it's seamless where everybody can actually still do, go about their business on the, uh, you know every day without us impacting them too hard. All right, with that, I'm going to show you just one last video about a news clip of, uh, <clears throat> of what they talked about on this project. Port of Long Beach and transportation officials, legislators, civic and community leaders, and members of the press recently gathered beneath the Gerald Desmond Bridge to kick off the historic project that will reshape the Long Beach skyline. The Gerald Desmond Bridge replacement project is officially a go. Well, this new bridge is, as you know, we've turned the bridge to everywhere. It's a culmination of efforts by a lot of stakeholders, uh, federal level, state uh, level, and the local level. So I think that uh, through the leadership of the various stakeholders, you have the result. And again, now estimated a cost of $950 million, it's going to be a state-of-the-art bridge. It, it says California's on the move again, you know, at a time when there's not a lot of infrastructure being built in the United States. We have now, besides the ports, we now have the, the connecting car to the Colton Crossing and the Desmond Bridge. The two key things are going to be fixed, and it's just wonderful. The project will bring thousands of jobs to the region, improve traffic conditions and air quality, and help the port to remain the premier gateway for international trade on the Pacific Rim. From a local economy standpoint, it's about 4,000 jobs a year now for the next five years while we're building this thing. And it's going to be just a fantastic icon for the city of Long Beach. This project is critical for us to remain, to keep our competitiveness and for us to be able to um, keep those huge contracts that we currently have that reflects into thousands and thousands of jobs. When the bridge opened in 1968, no one could have imagined the traffic and trade volume demands being placed on it today. The Gerald Desmond supports 68,000 traffic trips each day and connects 15% of the nation's waterborne cargo to the marketplace. And it does all of this with only five lanes sitting precariously low for the cargo vessels that must pass beneath. And although this aging bridge is safe to drive, it is deteriorating. You'll notice it has a netting underneath it and parts of the concrete are breaking from the rebar and it's, uh, it's an old bridge and it's past its useful life requires an enormous amount of maintenance and it's not high enough to be able to accommodate the new efficient uh, cargo carriers that come in here. So it, it really does need replacement and it's a major piece of in infrastructure for the ports. The new bridge, which will cost nearly $1 billion to build, is expected to generate more than $2 billion in economic activity here in Southern California. It will be six lanes wide and include emergency lanes to prevent delays and be tall enough to allow the latest generation of megaships to pass safely beneath. It's going to accommodate the bigger vessels, and the bigger vessels that are going to be 
uh, coming, uh, calling on the, on the Port of Long Beach are those vessels that are more environmentally friendly. The grade will be much more gentle. It's 8% eight, 8 grade now, it'll be a 5% grade. Uh, better gas mileage from the trucks, it'll be going up, less emissions, so uh, that's another huge environmental benefit. And again, it'll enable us to get, uh, grow this port and get uh, more cargo, which means more jobs and everything else. So it's got a, a lot of benefits. Preliminary construction will begin in 2011, and both Caltrans and the Port of Long Beach will work together over the next five years to ensure the project's success for the good of the local community, the region, and the entire nation. For more information, visit www.polb.com slash bridge. <clears throat> All right, yeah. So the bridge is actually uh, open and uh, up and running. So, uh, so yeah, for those of you guys who are in uh, Southern California, uh, definitely uh, make sure you drive through uh, Long Beach to uh, so you can see <clears throat> uh, see the uh, <clears throat> see the new bridge. <clears throat> oh, things uh, lost my place. Give me one second. So yeah, okay. Go to a quick second. All right, so. All right, so now since we've told you everything about Caltrans and some of the exciting projects that we've, we've been working on, so we just like to let you guys know that we are, uh, we like to be or think of us uh, ourselves as a workplace of choice. So once again, there's a lot of different uh, types of uh, divisions and units that we have over here. So definitely uh, not a boring uh, a moment in Caltrans. And as you saw in one of the initial videos is that we do encourage people to move around so, so at least you do, uh, you know, you get to see all the different uh, divisions and units in Caltrans and how they work together. And if you guys do actually graduate and, and do actually join us permanently as Caltrans, we do have something what we call a rotation program to where, let's say you were hired in a design, uh, then after you work here for a year uh, in design, then you're, uh, you go on rotation into different divisions, uh, such as construction, either planning or maintenance, just so you could see you know, how everything operates and how everything fits together in Caltrans. So that's one of the perks of working in Caltrans as a permanent employee. So if you guys do decide to pick Caltrans as your growth sector uh, uh, employer of choice, uh, you know, some of the things that we typically work on in Caltrans is uh, CAD, which stands for Computer Aided Design Drafting. Uh, uh, we also have regular CAD, you know, CAD, Computer Aided Drafting. And uh, what we use here is MicroStation, which is is like uh, like Coke and Pepsi. So I'm sure a lot of you guys probably have heard of AutoCAD, which is the Coke version of CAD, and MicroStation is the Pepsi version. So, uh, but you know, if you guys, it, it's be great if you guys have uh, CAD experience. And it doesn't matter what what type of CAD experience, any experience is good because they all do the same thing, just a little bit differently. But if you get, don't, don't even worry about it. Because definitely we have uh, you know a, a very extensive training program over here as well. And then and some of the work that you guys would be doing if you guys do uh, come to Caltrans, especially in the design division, you'll help with like certain things like quantities. So uh, I mean definitely you'll help with uh, some of the design. But then you know once we get design, we we usually you know need to uh, prepare the quantities to find out how much concrete we need, how much steel we need, everything. That way, it makes it uh, easier for the contractor to to bid on our, our projects, uh, uh, you know, before they build it. Then, of course, you're going to be helping out with plans and reports. So, uh, helping us putting uh, put together our our plan package that we we put out for uh, for the contractors to use uh, to build, and also the, some of the reports because we do have some planning reports that we like we talked about earlier that you guys uh, can uh, help out with into determining which uh, which alternative or what uh, improvements are going to be best for a particular project. So, <clears throat> so, uh, so that's all the spiel I have for Caltrans. And hopefully he's announced, uh, I'm not able to see everybody, but we, uh, we so uh, as Cheryl mentioned earlier, we have uh, been participating in a growth sector program for the last three years. And act, well, this will actually be our fourth year. And so this last year, we, we had about seven uh, growth sector interns in District 7. And I've invited uh, uh, Lewis, who was actually our uh, alum from uh, this year's uh, Growth Sector Internship uh, Program, to uh, give a few minutes of uh, testimonial on his experience with us here over here in Caltrans. So hopefully, uh, Lewis, are, are, are you here? 
Yep, I'm right here. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, <clears throat> open up to you, Lewis. Thanks. Yeah, no, thanks, Anthony. Um, yeah, so as Anthony mentioned, um, my name is Lisa Rakava. I'm right now with uh, Santa Ana College, uh, looking to transfer hopefully by next year. And I had the privilege of being able to intern at, uh, at Caltrans this uh, past summer. It was uh, overall a really great experience. Uh, I really loved the work environment there. Um, I specifically was able to work with the ITS division and uh, because of that, I unfortunately wasn't at the downtown building as much as the other interns, but it was still a really cool experience because as Anthony had mentioned before, the ITS division works um, hand in hand with the, with the TMC, the Traffic Management Center. So if you do end up uh, choosing Caltrans as your internship site and uh, get the opportunity to work with them, and you end up choosing the division of ITS, you will be relocated to a TMC building. Um, and that building is uh, not just random, it's uh, done for a specific reason, because as Anthony had mentioned earlier, they work hand in hand with the traffic management center. So any issues with like speeding or uh, just you know overall surveillance of the freeways, uh, that's basically what we communicate to the um, to the, sorry, I'm blanking, the highway patrol people. So in that way, you know, they can get sent out and know exactly where the issue is occurring. Um, some specific work that I was doing with the team was uh, making sure the health of the system was, was okay. So basically the communications of all of the devices that are out in the freeways, um, that's something that me and the other intern would uh, look up on and uh, make sure to report to our supervisor that everything was running well. Any issues that we had with any specific devices at certain locations, we would just make sure to uh, write it down and report back to our supervisor. So uh, you definitely have the opportunity to get involved with the work that they're doing uh, there at that specific division. Um, because we are interns, we also helped out with any you know day-to-day -day tasks that they were also handling, such as just um, configuring any devices before they're actually sent out to uh, their specific lo locations. Um, if you're interested in uh, networking, so like working with routers and switches, all that stuff, uh, I would definitely say that this is a good opportunity for that. Uh, everyone there on the team has a background in electrical engineering. I personally am majoring in electrical engineering, and I never even knew um, like that you could work with networking uh, through that. And uh, after getting a chance to speak with everyone on the team there, they also mentioned how they came in with basically uh, zero experience in networking, but they were all electrical engineers, um, which I thought was kind of interesting, but it just goes to show how uh, even after graduating, you still have the opportunity to continue to learn and grow and expand your skills um, in different areas. So uh, overall, I would definitely say that my experience at Caltrans was uh, was really great. I, I appreciate the offer that they that they were able to get me and uh, being able to spend my summer there with them was was the highlight of my summer. It was it was a great experience and overall something just good to do for yourself to continue to develop professionally in your career. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Louis. Yeah, and Mumu, yeah, you know, who was uh, uh, Louis's uh, supervisor, she said a lot of good things about you too. So so we're very <laughs> excited. So. Good to hear. Good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lewis, for giving a testimonial. So yeah. yeah no, I, thank you for inviting me. Uh, yeah. So I think I, I can say whatever I want, but yeah, you know, it, I think it means more when they hear from uh, you know someone uh, like uh, that's uh, more of their peers. Yeah. No. Definitely. Especially when we had our final meeting, I know that you guys appreciated the feedback that we gave you all. So uh, definitely, just hearing it from the students themselves, the ones who are actually out there doing it, it's it's definitely important to get information on so yeah yeah awesome okay thanks again lewis appreciate okay. it all right so uh so uh once again that, that's all i got so once again my name is anthony ng i'm uh from uh, caltrans district seven which uh, once again is the best district in the whole state uh <laughs> which is in los angeles uh, southern california and if you guys do want to uh, get a hold of me or if you guys have any additional questions outside of uh you know ap after uh you know the, this meeting like a, like if you wake up in a cold sweat tonight with a question, definitely feel free to uh, send me an email. All right. So, so yeah. So I guess I'll leave it open uh, uh, or open it up for any questions you guys might have. Okay. Thanks so much, Anthony and Lewis.
Um, I see, we'll open up for questions. Um, so feel free to yeah. unmute yourself um, if you have a question or you can put it straight into the chat. I see that um, Rhea asked a question earlier. Um, and I know that a lot of students always have this question um, in terms of being a different major. I think most students, a lot of students assume that they have to be specifically like a civil engineer major in order to intern or work at Caltrans. And Lewis just told us that that is not true. Um, so mm -hmm. if you can talk a little bit about um, that, um, Anthony or Lewis. And then also um, Rhea asked specifically, what are opportunities for students um, with computer science backgrounds at Caltrans? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'll start with that, and then Lewis, yeah, uh, chime in, uh, you know, if, if you have anything to chime in with. But yeah, for computer science, we do have, you know, so like I said, about just 39% of the uh, people employed here uh, in Caltrans are civil engineers. So we do have a lot of many other types of uh, disciplines. So we do have a very robust IT uh, division as well, which actually I, I, I didn't, I forgot to put in. I wasn't able to put in all the different divisions that we have in, in Caltrans. Uh, Otherwise, that'd be a super long list. But yeah, but we do have an IT uh, division, which this year, it just so happens that we had uh, one of the growth sector interns actually was uh, working with our IT department. So definitely, uh, yeah, definitely opportunities for computer science majors. And then um, a follow-up question. Um, John's asking for mechanical engineers. Um, what are the opportunities? Okay, so unfortunately, we don't have too many uh, electrical engineers in Caltrans because because uh, mainly we do with roads and bridges. So, uh, but we do have some mechanical engineers, uh, but they're mainly located in our headquarters office up in Sacramento. And usually, the type of things that they work on are the uh, the mechanical things for our maintenance uh, buildings or or a lot of our uh, field uh, offices and, and whatnot. You know, as far as like uh, pumps or uh, you know. Um, your some of the electrical connections for, for uh, uh, for or designing you know the uh, the facilities for our electrical connections and all that stuff, but yeah. So unfortunately, in many of the different districts, we don't have uh, too many uh, mechanical engineers, but but we do have some. If you're really really interested in working Caltrans, but it's mainly uh, located up in Sacramento. Great, thank you. And then I see Julie put a question asking, um, what's the closest district in the East Bay? In the East Bay, oh, so it'd be District Four, actually. So uh, they're located in Oakland, but uh, uh, that's where the main office is at. But then definitely they have a lot of different uh, satellite offices. And I'm glad you asked about that because just this year, just like Cheryl was mentioned, we did actually get uh, our partners or in District Four to uh, to participate in the growth sector program, and they loved it so much they're actually interested in uh, participating again for next the next session. And we're also trying to uh, or get our partners in Orange County, which is District 12. Uh, so uh, they are interested as well. Awesome. Thanks. We're STEM course taking over. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you guys are. And Thanks. you guys are more than welcome. <laughs> Um, and I think one thing to note um, for our students to keep aware as well is um, Caltrans does a really great job of taking a look at our students' interests and then placing you into specific um, departments. So um, if there is interest in like when you go through our um, STEM core internship application process, um, they are, Anthony does a great job of like giving us a full list of like, these are the departments that are available um, and actually providing a position description um, that you would potentially um, be able to work in within that department. And then our students have an opportunity to say like, these are like my top three, like one, two, three that, I'd, that I'm really interested in. And then having the opportunity to speak with um, the mentors or the potential supervisors in those departments, see if it's a good fit for you, which is very atypical. Not all of our um, employer partners do that. And Caltrans does a really great job of taking our student interests and skills and um, placing them accordingly. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's why we we strive to be the uh, employer of choice. And especially since we're such a big organization, we definitely have a lot of options. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I see in the chat, there was a, a question that uh, higher up in, in the chat would uh, ask about uh, what back, background one needs to have uh, to be in project management and program management. Uh, you know what, since it's, uh, uh, it's in Caltrans, uh, technically, you don't really need uh, too much of a background besides being a civil engineer, you know, because uh, all all our project managers are civil engineers. But actually, well, I take that back. Technically, you could be any engineer. So uh, uh, and so, as long as you're an engineer, you're in Caltrans, you're fine. Because actually, I do know quite a few people in Caltrans that were mechanical engineering majors, 
but they're working as as a civil. So, uh, but yeah, and like I said, in Caltrans, if you don't know, uh, you know, if you don't have any background in any one of the different uh, disciplines that we have here, we have a very robust, uh, you know, training program over here in Caltrans. So yeah, so if you're interested in project management, you come in, we will train you as much as you need. Thanks, Anthony. And then we have um, a room full of students at Forsyth Tech. Um, our STEM core um, students in um, are all together at Forsyth right now. And um, they're asking, um, you mentioned IT opportunities. Are cybersecurity ops included in that? I'm not 100% sure, but I, uh, I, I'm like 80% sure that they do because it is something uh, very big for us over here in Caltrans. Because you know, once again, being such a big organization, we're extremely uh, vulnerable, uh, vulnerable uh, for uh, you know cyber attacks, and and we do have annual cyber uh, uh, annual IT training that everybody is mandatory for us all to take. So then that that is put together by our IT department. So I'm eighty percent sure that they do. Uh, we do have it. I mean, I, well, I know that we do have it, but as far as working, I think uh, you know in the districts they do have uh, you know have a hand in it. But I think mainly it's from our headquarters. But yeah, uh, either way, you, know, you will be able to work on some of that as well. Thank you. Um, since we have Lewis here, I do have a question because I've 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 gotten the question from students like over like throughout the semester and like over the years, just like what it's like as an intern coming in on like day one. Um, if you have any tips or strategies that you could share. Um, in terms of like how you acclimated, um, how you sought out mentorship or just like got your questions answered. And obviously like you were a very successful um, intern. Um, so any insight that you could share um, for most of our students on this call are hoping to be placed, um, whether it's at Caltrans or um, at another partner this summer. So anything that you could share? Uh, yeah, so what I remember from day one was, uh, so one thing that, uh, they laid out for our structure of how we were going to work over the summer was we had days where we would go in twice a week in person and then we had uh, the other three days of the week uh, to work remotely from home so for my first day it was technically uh, remote so uh, I was just at home uh, getting started to set up all my information with them and uh, sort of get the website projects going for um, anything that they needed me to collect, such as like data for the devices that were out on the freeways. Um, however, I consider my first actual day was the next day when I had to actually go into the traffic management center building. Um, I, was, I just remember being like super nervous because um, it was my first time like actually working in like a position like that. Um, but there is absolutely no reason to be nervous um, because everyone was really helpful in getting me like settled in uh, how to get started and uh, just setting up projects so I can get started on those as well. I will say that my first day was uh, pretty slow, but it's a given because it's your first day at the building. They're going to show you around, uh, get you set up, get your desks ready, uh, make sure all of your devices are uh, working properly to IT standards and uh, making sure that you can actually get access to the projects that they want you to work on. So uh, you typically won't hit the ground running from day one. Uh, instead, it'll be more like a crawl, just making sure that you can actually have the tools that you need to get started. But it will definitely pick up as you go. I remember the next the next week, once I had access to all the websites and the, and the spreadsheets and all of the software that they would utilize, um, I remember just uh, starting up on different projects that they would have for me. Um, as for any questions that I would ever have, they would always be answered. Um, thankfully my schedule was in line with the days that my supervisor would go into the office. So I was able to communicate directly with them. So I never really felt a disconnect from me to the supervisor. However, keep in mind that, uh, because they are supervisors, they're really busy as well. They have, uh, other projects going on. Um, but because of that, I highly recommend that you uh, start building connections with your coworkers because the other employees who work there um, are a great resource. They're people who were in your shoes once and are walking sort of the same path that that you're on right now. And I got a lot of invaluable information out of them uh, just from getting advice on what their educational uh, path was like and to their professional career development path was like. And um, definitely got a lot of tips from them and how they sort of got to where they're at currently. So 
if your supervisor is around, just be sure to communicate with the other employees that are there as much as the supervisor is so they can help you out with anything that you need. They're working on those same projects and you're just there to support them with it. Um, you may have one of them be like a kind of like sub supervisor, I guess. I know we had one of the employees um, do that for us. He was overseeing a lot of the projects that we were working on, but that's mostly because he too was there in the office every time that we were there. So if we ever did have questions and our supervisor wasn't there, he would be the first person we would ask. Uh, and then just, we would go from there. Um, overall though, I would say it was a really good experience. Uh, just make sure to build those connections with everyone else. Uh, follow them on LinkedIn, <laughs> you know, get something <laughs> with them, uh, start like trading emails. There are resources that you can uh, utilize later on in the future. Um, again, like how I mentioned before, they, they were once in your shoes. And so why not ask them for tips and advice of what you were doing? Specifically for me, it was very helpful because they too were electrical engineers. So I might as well ask them for advice on what they thought about electrical engineering and where uh, the career options are for them afterwards. So I got a lot of information out of them that was really like invaluable to me just because I don't really know too much about my major yet. I know some things, but it's so vague that there's so many things that you can do uh, with it, like end up at Caltrans and work with uh, the ITS department that I didn't even know existed. So it just completely opened up a new path for me uh, and hopefully a future option as well. So yeah, I don't know if you guys have any other specific questions regarding uh, my experience with it, but that's just a little bit of like how I got started and was able to work with others and uh, sort of make the experience as great of an experience as I can, because you definitely do want to get the most out of it while you're there. Amazing. Thanks for that, Lewis. Um, and congratulations again on um, getting in there and just like taking every advantage um, of the opportunity. So really great to hear. Um, I have one last question in the chat from Julie. Um, I think just asking for clarification again, I think for Anthony in terms of your position at Caltrans, if you can, I think Julie might have missed it, if you can give a brief overview again. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't go into too much detail. I didn't want to you know, uh, both too much, but yeah, I'm an office chief in, in the division of design of engineering services. So I am uh, in charge of about like 60 different people uh, and it's the engineering services. So we're a support group where we have utilities engineering, materials engineering, we have design liaisons, we have the CAD units. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty exciting position, at, at least for me, because we get to uh, support everybody and we get to help everybody out over here. And once again, I work in uh, District 7, which is in the LA, uh, LA County or LA office here in downtown LA. So thank you, Anthony. Uh, what, oh, another question from Forsyth, um, probably the last one since we're right at the hour. Um, when it comes to the interview process, is all that remote and how it potentially working from North Carolina work? Um, I can answer the, um, I, at least the interview component. Um, we have a general STEM core interview process for our students. So um, we're actually going to be opening up the um, STEM core application next month in October. So um, more information will be coming out to all of our students on that. So you do apply um, online, you submit your STEM resume, your first round interview um, is virtual with um, somebody on our growth sector staff. Um, second round interviews, if you're selected to move um, on to a second round interview, um, we connect you directly with our employer partner. So if you do have interest in Caltrans, you end up doing typically a virtual um, interview with Caltrans. Um, in terms of for this specific opportunity, um, since Growth Sector does fund placements for students for um, internships, we do not currently, um, for all of our placements, provide a housing stipend. So um, if you were out of state, and we have in the past had students who were um, really committed, who wanted um, a specific internship, like let's say like in Los Angeles, and they had a family member, and they were like, I can stay there, I can get there, I'm great, <laughs> we're able to place you in that situation. There have been um, other opportunities, and depend um, for Foresight students, we can um, talk a little bit separately about what that looks like, um, where there is sometimes opportunities for relocation and housing stipends, but that's not the standard for all of our placements. So just to put that out there um, as well. Um, but that's why we do um, first round interviews with all the students just to figure out like what your situation is and where um, a potential placement makes the most sense for you. So um, more information to come. Um, I work closely with Al I'm over at Foresight. So I'll be working with Al um, and answering questions um, as they come up for each of our individual students. 
Yeah, and as Lewis mentioned earlier, the way we're working at Caltrans right now is we're uh, teleworking three days out of the week and uh, working in the office two days out of the week. So uh, definitely a lot, lot uh, more flexible than we used to be before COVID. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. So I want to be sensitive to everybody's time. Um, Anthony, yours too, just because we we had you for the hour and we're um, just two minutes over. But um, thank you so much for your time. I um, fully encourage our students, um, like we keep noting, um, connect. Anthony shared uh, his email address, I'm sure, um, <laughs> probably on LinkedIn. So definitely encourage you to um, get out there and connect. Um, definitely keep Caltrans in mind um, as a potential placement um, as we are thinking about internships already. So um, thank you everybody for your time. Appreciate you. I'll send out the recording to your support specialist as well um, to watch this back and um, stay connected. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Lewis. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Have everybody.